the sea, the immortal sea. It has been said that our home should not be called Earth, but sea, as most of its surface is covered by the rolling, infinite, steely waves of the planet girding ocean. For all history, man has stood at its shore and stared at the horizon, imagined more, and placed his life on the line to prove his courage and test himself against the unforgiving laws of Neptune's domain. Since man first built boats and screamed his defiance at their sea gods, we have proven ourselves on the waves of the deeps. So it was that a small band of challengers de mer, aquanauts, brothers of the sea, banded together to celebrate a half century of life and set out to the remote coastline of British Columbia's Emerald Sea. Here, on a small cove on a rocky island, off the coast of, not France, but Vancouver Island, we will celebrate life, prove our manhood's not cheap, and challenge the unforgiving, steely depths of la mer. For this remote northern site, the air temperature was a pleasant surprise. The bright sun beat down on our backs, and our team reveled in its warmth by shedding our pantalons and donning short pants. Sadly, one of our members had neglected his expedition list, and the team forced him to sacrifice his pants to the sun god. The pasty whiteness of his limbs, a testament to the brutal cold and dark of the Canadian prairie winter. Here, deep in the inky bosom of the Emerald Sea, we encountered the rockfish sheen, the majestic channel rockfish, lonely monarch of the Barnacle Reef. He wears a jaunty suit of azure with jaune stripes and is all too happy to say bonjour to the visiting divers, intruders from the surface. How unlike his brilliant cousin, the tiger rockfish. Shy and nervous like a provincial schoolgirl, we see but a brief flash of his glorious striped crimson adornment before he vanishes into the crack. Suddenly, our team is surrounded by a school of juvenile rockfish. This chaotic crowd swarms around us, investigating our motley team of aquanauts, before vanishing into the deeps as if on command. Do they know something we do not, this merry band? Does a threat loom from the darkness below? Sadly, our time at God's Pocket Resort has come to a close. Packing our things, we bid adieu to this special place, this outpost on the edge of the Emerald Sea, this gateway through which we can shed the tyranny of gravity down our aqua lungs and return to the primordial roots of its cold water pulsating with life. For a short time, we partake in the symphony of life, which bursts from the rocks and sands of the northern coast. Our time was all too short like the pant legs of our aged friend. But our memories will live forever. We leave the Emerald Sea with an impression of its eternal complexity, puzzlement over its abundance of life, full of shapes and color of all varieties, and with humility, knowing its vulnerability to humankind. Will its splendor survive to be viewed by future generations of aquanauts? We can but hope, and do our part to preserve this lonely jewel along the windswept coast of Vancouver Island.